no idea how that's going to fly my first time recording with OBS, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, all right, so let's load up. Just make sure that it's uh, getting your audio stream. It otherwise, it's otherwise it would be a lovely silent picture show. <laughs> You know, I don't know if it has. Let me see. It. Make sure it's got. That's a good point. Um, I want to do audio capture as well. Desktop. And from audio. what I've seen of people uh, streaming, it should have like a mixer bar where you can see how much of your audio it's getting, mm -hmm. or if it's getting all of our audio or just yours. I do see that. Um, Mic audio, desktop audio. Ooh, things to break. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we're good. We'll see. Maybe I've got some things to learn about. OBS recording as well. So we'll burn that bridge when we get to it after the game. All right. All right. So the setup for this scenario is um, you've received um, a, a call and you are uh, headed to a scene where there is definitely some Viper activity. Um, and uh, you're there to investigate. And stop whatever it is they're doing because they're always up to no good. Right? So, um, okay. so I'd like you to come in from this side. So set your minis up somewhere down on this side of where you've, you've arrived on the V-Jet, which is just off the board. And um, you are coming into the game over on this side okay <clears throat> so wherever you are street sidewalk however you want to do it there are a few random with body. ironclad being officially overconfident right in the middle of the road <laughs> okay so i'm gonna put some of these innocent bystanders over here and here okay okay mac re remember uh you can use uh, Q and E to rotate your character. Um, you're able you you're able to see the HUD bars for your character, right? Yes. Okay, because I do not see them on yours. Correct. We... Permissions, or you won't be able to see them on mine either. Um... Uh, the thing is, I think Mac and I should probably be on the same team. Yep, so you can go up to the top, and I think you click your name, and you can choose to be on the hearts team. I think you can do change teams. Okay. And that might do it, because I think I set them up so that hearts are... Uh, hearts are I all do not the same see uh, Iron Patriot. I think we have to be on spades. He said that spades was uh, learning mode, and you could see everybody's, but then we'd be able to see the DM. Well, that's fine. You could see me too. I, don't, I really don't care. In another there game, we go. I can I can see everybody's now. If you're in spades, okay. Yeah, I popped over to spades. Hmm. Thought I had your huds. Oh, um, when we set your new HUD up for your new minis. I did not have hearts checked because I was working on my minis. That's why. So normally you would check heart, hearts and not uh, hearts and spades, but that's just fine. I really don't care. We're all, we're all just going here to have a good time. All right. So no top secret stuff going on. Okay. Okay. And the scale on my map is a little off, and that's okay too. I don't care about that. I it looks want... like Iron Patriots about uh, 
14 feet tall if we're doing 2 meter hexes. Really? Why is that? Uh, because it looks like if it's 2 meter hexes and he's and he lays down, he'd be 2 hexes tall. Oh, he is huge. Yeah, so, so let's get him down to where he belongs. Right? So I'm going to just uh, alt rotate him. Do, 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 do. No, I said alt rotate. And he just falls to the floor. Thanks for all that. Not helpful. <laughs> okay, I think he's a little bit too big still, so I'm going to hit the minus on him one more time. All right, that's good. I'm happy with that. You guys are pretty close to the same. Well. Close uh, enough. Ironclad close enough. should be bigger than, yeah. Okay. You think so? Close enough for government work. Okay, there you go. Isn't Ironclad, yeah, I mean, he, he should doesn't be have bigger. He doesn't have growth. He, he's uh, high density. He, and oh. the Colossus figure is, well, he's huge. So That works for me. Okay. Since David's, uh, oh, uh, let's see. Trying to bring up the turn viewer. I haven't launched it yet. I don't think uh, it will work for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, turn controller, it's up. I just, oh. We shouldn't be able to do anything with the turn controller. We can see it, but that's only but the DM's the one that Good point. Well, I don't even see where to bring them in. Uh configuration actually uh first uh the click to ref oh, the, I see. the non reload combat. button right reflect Yep. And then uh You'd be clicking on like Defender, Ironclad, and so on mm -hmm. to add them to combatants. An error. So I get an error, script master control. Attempt to compare number with string. Okay. Well, there's an error adding defender. Okay, let's get all these. Whoops. Hey, stop messing around. Messing around with my controller. I will have to hurt you. Oh, I'm crazy. Okay, so there is an error adding that guy. I'm going to change his name because he shouldn't be Iron Patriot. He should be Defender. So I'm going to change his name on him. On see. the mini? That's fine. I don't think that matters. It, what matters is this This just has to do with the controllers, those circles, uh, the disks, and how they're named, um, and what's in the note, the notebook. So the minis are not related. The only thing that we're doing with the minis is the um, bars. I like how I'm starting a guy off with like a reduced amount of endurance or something. Let's see. Oh, uh, you may want to check the scale listed for the hexes. 
because at the two meter scale, it should be like uh, two point three instead of uh, yeah. one point one five. No, it is. Okay. So if you hold down, if you start at one side of a hex and hold it down to the other, it draws the ruler and it's showing two inches, which is okay. two two meters. Oh, two at, meters at that scale. It, it puts inches. I'm not sure why. Americans. Ugh. All right. Uh, the the inches per hex is because it used to be. Uh, oh, I yeah, I a I've, standard one inch uh, hex for old meters. war gaming. Mm-hmm. Yep, twenty five millimeter hexes. And twenty five mini- twenty five millimeter scale miniatures. Right. Yep. And so the sixth edition does like um, does have a. Uh, a nod to that. The fifth edition apparently still uses inches, which uh, you know, I I last time I really played was fourth edition, so I, I I'm a newbie to sixth edition as well. Okay. Since since the uh, movement tracking and range tracking isn't in here yet, uh, would you mind handing me a uh, a small uh, token for, indeed uh, indeed so let's do a, a block and change the color to a purple and then so you can have that and resize it as you like I'll drop another one for Defender, who's blue. Yeah. Okay, you can come get that Defender. Make that as big or small as you want, I guess it doesn't really matter to me. All right. So, we have a problem. We need to get Brennel in here. So, let me just. Uh... Now, how do you rotate them? Q, uh, and, Q and E. e. Yep. Or you can use your mouse wheel. All right, let's see what kind of mess we can make out of this. Waiting for Brennell to tell me what to do about Defender.
Meanwhile, I'm going to take a quick look at Ironclad's bio so that I try to play him right. <laughs> I'll be right back. Um, um, um. I am holding. Do, 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 Hi, Jim. What are you uh, doing in our chat? Elevator music. I'm on hold right now with support. Oh, I see. That's not the way it works. Um, Thank okay, you. under check. Uh, under, under, yeah. under technical support, I've uh, put a link for you. Um, all right, yeah. Mike, there you go. Technical support. Look in there. Go to that location. Pull that. Jim, I'm now looking up the code you requested. Please hold. Um, you said... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Now I've got to find where that went. Thank you very uh, much for calling support. My yeah. name is Rajid. My name no, is no, no. Tom. Yeah, yeah, the first one is, my, my name's Bob. George. You're thinking, my name is yeah, George. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking, I'm under the Steam folder. Sorry? Would you, yes, yeah, it should be under there. Find oh, that location. Steam, Steam library is just its way of saying Steam, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so you go and hunt that down while I try and answer the other caller on the line. Because um, obviously there's not enough people in this call center. Um, we are experiencing exceptionally long call times. Thank you for your yeah. patience. Yeah, that's correct. So true. Um, and it's on line 1233. Three. One, two, three, three. So I'm going to try and backtrack and work out what someone did to trigger that puppy. Remove player. That's a remove player call. 1233. Three. 8 to 46 is a remove player. So Did that, anyone drop out of the game and then come back in? No, no. Uh, okay, well that's good, because that might trigger it. Um, uh, Mac did leave way earlier. He did. Does he need to reload the character? Did he? Is he, is he the one playing Defender? Yes. And he, he, right. he left the game and came back in again because he had to... Uh, I, it was not really a technical issue. He just dropped. Oh, maybe because it uh, didn't. Uh, he he couldn't click or something on something, so he left the game and then came okay. back again. Well, one thing that needs that, that, that often happens at the moment in the recent rebuild for Steam, you might ha some things won't click, and you just have to move a window around. Just move the window around. Mm -hmm. it, it works. Fundamentally, somehow they they're, they're interacting with the background as well as the button you're supposed to be clicking on. Mm -hmm. So if you get any of that, just, just tell them to move the window. Literally, slide it right. a quarter of an inch right. and then click, and you're all good. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's that's in the remove player, add player code. Um, enter combat in segment 12. Have you done end combat? Uh, no. We're just starting, so I was just loading up. I, I did the... Oh, okay. I did the refresh, so I clicked the refresh non-combatants. It loaded everybody in, and then I was hitting the plus button to move everyone up to combatants. Okay. And everyone moved except defender. When I click that, I get that error. Yeah. So two things. First of all, get defender to reload. I don't think this will fix it, but get defender to reload, and then try and add him again, because something that defender's got, it when it when it tries to check it. It's actually saying it's a string, as in it's a piece of text instead of a number. Right. And that's confusing. I do hope he hasn't gone in and done change on anything. If he's changed something and made it from a number into a piece of text, that can also trigger that. But I don't think he would have. It's highly unlikely someone would sit there fiddling and uh, trying to change their stats to being letters instead of numbers, right? Not. Yeah, but he could have fat fingered a letter because they were. We were talking about change at one point, so that. that oh. Well, 
Okay. We were going over the HUD. So that's it. Let me. I'll bounce back over to the game and we'll work. We'll see if we can, that helps. Yeah, have a look at that. Try that and then bounce back. But that's just option one. Um, I might join you in a few seconds. Okay. No I need worries. to switch back to cooler one. That's right. Yep. <laughs> All right. I'm back. Welcome. Um, all right. So, Defender, it's very possible that you changed something when you were in your HUD under change that maybe you put a letter instead of a number, right? Text instead of numbers. Uh, that will cause this error. Also, you did leave the game and came back in at one point. So, what I want you to do is in your HUD, I want you to hit the, the reload, the load character button again. So it reloads your um, JSON from the... So you would do that on your HUD, and you reload... Uh, not there, but on the black... Did you... Um, are you... Did you hit the share button on your little black thing? Yeah. Okay. So doing yeah, it. I, I okay. just re... Also, if you went into change, because we were talking about that, and if you changed anything, and you accidentally fat fingered a letter in there instead of a number, that will also cause this problem. Um, it reverted everything back, so it should enough. See if you can load me. I need to probably end combat and start it again. That didn't help. End combat did not end combat. Why? So click to unload all combatants. Let me refresh all the combatants. Let's see if I can add you now. Yep. All right. So that did it. I had to refresh everything on my end as well. So go ahead and adjust your numbers. Be careful not to put any alphas in your stats if you're adjusting your stats. Like, you know, up in the JSON file or anything. Okay. Well, I think we have it. All right, let's try this thing. Let's see what happens. I've got a bunch of dudes out on the board to make life difficult for me, keeping track of everything. <clears throat> so in my experience, by the way, with many years, uh, probably a decade of running champions, I started uh, first, first edition, second edition, third edition. I didn't know they were editions. They were just called Champions, Champions 2, and Champions 3. had no idea they were editions. They were just new rules that were added on, things that are bolted onto the main rules, etc. And then a big blue book came out as fourth edition. So we bought that, and that was the coolest thing because now it wasn't all these little tiny flimsy books. It was one big it was hard, a hard cover. It was a hardcover <laughs> book, and uh, and the hardcover fell off. <laughs> we had to glue the sucker back on again. <laughs> but we played with that, and that's what I used for most of the time. Uh, there wasn't a lot of experimentation going on after that, so uh, some time after I stopped playing, moved away, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and they announced a fifth edition. I thought, what for? Uh, it's you know I, I maybe they're just like fixing a few little things or something and that kind of seemed like what it was it was just kind of just like uh you know fine tuning and polishing things up but then um hold on i'm gonna let him know that worked hold on mono bleeding edge oh, so it's kind of all right pardon bad. me i'm gonna interrupt this call uh yeah huh? just letting you know that worked it, he, he probably fat fingered something it was so reloading the character and then me reloading combatants that worked okay so thank you for that um yeah i've got no uh, for the want of a better word defensive code in there um yeah. i'm not i'm not looking for someone doing something weird not, yeah right exactly so you're okay, good so, but, but but document that anyway put it in the playtest results uh, and indicate that most probably it was an incorrect setting done by change, but at least it then reminds me that I've got to start building defenses around the input in change. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah, Sorry, right, bye. Toby. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I'm just letting him know that was working so he wasn't, you know, 
hanging. All right. So, um, so I come from a, a world of two inch hexes and not meters and stuff like that. So we'll see how all this goes. Uh, but the biggest problem that I encountered running champions uh, or fantasy hero or anything was when it was the GM's turn, it just turned into a snooze fest because the GM is rolling, especially like I'm trying to do here, a crap ton of agents. Uh, and then the players would have to just be like, okay, I'm going to head to the restroom now. I'm going to go get a drink because it would just took forever to roll just to find out that, you know, almost all of them missed, right? Um, so I, we, we fixed that with a deck of cards that replaced dice rolls. And I could just flip, 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 flip. And it, I was good. Uh, I have those cards recreated in Tabletop Simulator, but this is not the point of this playtest. Uh, this point of this playtest is to see how uh, the HUDs will roll and how they uh, how they do. So that's what we're going to do. That's our main focus here, is to see how fast combat goes. And so I figured, what better way to test that with, an, with a bunch of Viper Agents? All right, so let's begin. You ready? We are at t segment 12. And let me close this. All right. So let's begin. It looks like Defender is up. How do we get this? So let's see. Uh, on 12. Oh, I need to click here. Now nah, we're good. Except it skipped Defender. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Defender, you're just having a rough day. I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> All right, so there's a screenshot. I just, uh, it says... It might have, been, might have been because when I changed it, I went from a four-speed to a um, five-speed, and I went from a 10 decks to a 25 deck. So it could have been, I could have been being, being after Ironclad until I changed my stuff. So it could be throwing oh, it off. Did you just one. change it again? All right. Yeah, I changed it back. Let me see. So I'm going to end combat and I'm going to reload everything. A good time just to. Okay. We are done with combat. And yeah, it didn't move you down either because you changed stuff. On the other hand, Ironclad and all the Viper agents got moved into non combatants. Correct. But Defender, you're stuck. Because you changed. Defender aborted. Uh, I like how it changed to post 12 recovery. Okay, a lot of cool stuff about this, but it does not tolerate change. As Brennell referred to it, he says, I have not written a lot of defensive code into, <laughs> you know, to stop people from doing stuff. Let's see. What if I check that? End combat. Error in script. Sweet. Should um, I know that this is going to take a minute, but should I just go into instead of trying to change it on the character itself, I'll just go into the the Jason notebook file. and change it. In, yeah. yeah, and change it there. Yes, do that first. Actually, this would be the kind of thing. Did you have a, a a Jason file for Defender that you already modified? I thought I heard you. No, I haven't. Because uh, when we were talking about it, I talked to him earlier this morning. And he said just to change it through the change. So let's try that, and we'll see what happens. This is one thing we need. Yeah, so these are all good things. I'm going to go interrupt his uh, support call again and just see if, let him know that, that we started combat, and then you made a change to speed, and it broke everything. But that's good because there may be some powers that, that do that, right? Or you can do a speed drain. And it breaks it breaks the uh, the code. All right, I'll be right back. And he's back. Hello, I would like Hello. to request more support, please. Uh, all right. Exactly. So I started combat. We started yeah. segment twelve, and sometime yep. after I loaded defender up, it worked. He moved up into the combatants and everything after he re yeah. reset the character. Yeah. Then uh, I hit start combat. I hit the button at the top to put it on 12. And it skipped Defender, who has a higher dex than Ironclad. And it went right to Ironclad. I went, oh, well, I guess you don't get to play this round. Uh, so the problem was... 
he, that's not right. Yeah, go on. Exactly. So he changed his speed using the change button on his HUD uh, from four to five or something like that. And that seemed oh. to have bollocksed him up because then I tried to end the combat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The speed, it's one of the known bugs. It's up on the GitHub. Don't change your speed in the game at the moment. Not not advisable to do. Um, I, literally, that was the thing I was working on today and have been working on today to try and <laughs> that was um, so, so, yes, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and it's very dependent. But more importantly, his order in the turn of combat is entirely dependent upon his dex, not his speed. High speed characters don't go first, high dex characters go first. Yeah? Uh, yeah, so his dex probably was modified as well because of... Uh, and he probably modified it after, because what he was doing is just changing so that all of his enhancements were in his primary stats, right? No, no, shouldn't have done that. Really shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so th so th the problem, just so you know what the symptom is right now, is he's stuck in combatants. I can't end the combat uh, without... Yeah. I can't remove yeah. him from that. No, no, uh, and because effectively he's used a, a thing which is meant to be for if you get hit with a drain or something like that, he's used that to go around and alter all his stats to be effectively mm -hmm. like he's come up. What he right. should have done is just gone straight out to, to the Jason. Yeah, to the Jason file. Yeah, well, not, not even to Heroes. Heroes designer. Just change them all to use secondary. In other words, make them you know, from secondary to primary. So right. they became the one that used in game. And then just bring the character back in. Um, or the Jason file and edit the Jason file. Either one would have worked in a heartbeat. Yep. Um, but, but not that one. So, right. do you have any advice on how to get him out of combatants and reset the fight? Have you done end combat down at the bottom? Yeah. So you opened it up, you did oh, end now it combat. worked. It wasn't working before, and now it just works. So he must be mucking around some more. Yeah, defensive yeah. code's a good idea, just saying. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I, yeah, yeah. But, but please bear in mind... Um, <laughs> <clears throat> you've got to build the structure before you can defend yeah. it right? yes that's right <laughs> yes. so if you have to build something then work know. out what people are going to break and then fix it right i've played castle panic i know you can defend something with no protection i mean without anything <laughs> yeah. being built I know. yeah yeah, yeah that, that, that's not true anyway <laughs> you get you get back in he's most probably screwed that character into the ground reload it from fresh to stop him screwing it into the ground again yeah and what we'll do is we'll look at the hero designer because i'm not gonna i don't i'm, I'm gonna join mark in his game for about five minutes, no 10 minutes to see if that works yep. but i suspect i won't be able to fix mark's work today to be honest uh, um all right i'm jumping back out thanks very much all right see ya all right. i'll be over there in a minute all right so you fixed it because while i was talking with him I hit the end combat again, and it moved you down there. Right. Uh, what I did is I just reloaded Defender. Okay. So now if you want to go make changes, make it up in the JSON file, or go back out to Hero Designer, make your changes there, and then export the JSON file, and then put it back in here. That's what he's saying. So uh, clunky at best, but the point being is... That once you're in game, this uh, a speed change right now. He was working on code. He says that was one of the things that was on his list of working on today. Was fixing the code of like if you have a speed change in the middle of combat that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, let's try this again. Yeah, I was looking at the at the. JSON file, yeah, the, we are yeah the JSON, uh, and uh, and changing everything in there is going to be a pain. So yeah, yeah, let me yeah. just. Do you want me to uh, wait while you the, change it in Hero Designer? Either that, or I can just change the kinetic if you want. I don't care, whichever you like. But the kinetic doesn't have a. You use the flat mini for that. I just have all the two D minis. Yeah. I don't know which one do you think is going to be fast. Uh, I if you if you prefer to play defender, then just fix him. Let's see, maybe I can. Let's see if I can fix him. By the way, turn control does not collapse. Okay. Do 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 defender. Oh yeah, 
No, pain in the butt. All right. I mean, it's there. Like, strength says 15. Short name is strength. Strength by 17. Yeah. So you just have to change the There's 15 like... to 40, change the 12 to 17 for each year. Aha. I remembered from one of the videos that with everyone in spades that players are able to manipulate the turn controller. So yes. I'm throwing the uh, combatants back in the list. <laughs> Nice. It's it's nice to have assistant GMs. <laughs> Except when you unshare it, and it goes back to the control. It's like ah, where'd it go? <laughs> All right. Jump to phasing character, huh? Okay, well, yeah, I'll tell you what. Why don't you just change over to another character? You want to play Kinetic? Jump over to that. Let's get... Let's just... Just to test the dice rolling and stuff like that. We won't worry about the mini for this turn. Or this uh, this attempt at playtesting. And let's just see how combat flows. I'm interested to go through this. I've watched videos, right? Like you have. But <clears throat> I don't have uh, a good grasp on... Okay, which one's Kinetic? Uh, red. And then load up your character, your controller. I'm going to see if I'm able to move Defender since he's no longer in the fight. Okay, that looked like that worked. So the good news is you get to go first. So put your mini out on the board. Okay, it looks like both sides of the kinetic mini are show his face. Yeah, that's the way they work. It's just a reversed. Uh, no, it's not. Hat, so. It's blurred, and it has his name on the back. It's not that way on the front. So you set the image. All I did is I took the image, and then I reversed it and blurred it. So okay. when you look closely, you'll see it's just a blurred image. And it doesn't have his name, but otherwise it has his name uh, only on the back. All right. So we're at phase 12. Kinetic, you're up. What do you want to do, buddy? Oh, let's give you a block, too. You need a block that's red. Or you can just change, we'll change the purple one to red, right? No, not purple, blue. No, I've got the purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Change this one to red. Flip. So the idea behind the, if, you, if you're not aware, the idea behind the blocks is so that you can, when it's not your turn, you can kind of pre-plan your movement, measure range by putting your blocks in place to show this is where I'm going to move when it's my turn. And then you just simply move your controller to where your block is or the hex next to your block or what have you. Okay. And measuring distances and stuff is much easier to do when you have a straight up top down. 
All right. Okay, so Kinetic is going to run over there behind the car. You having trouble keeping hold of him? Yeah, I'm having trouble keeping hold of him. Are you on like a laptop or something using a trackpad? Nope, my mouse has been acting funny oh, for the gotcha. last couple of days. I don't. Know. Yeah, your clicker. All right, so you have moved. Uh, is that a, f a full move or a half move? Uh, his movement is forty, so that's twenty inches, and I'm going to hold for now. All right, click to abort. No, I want to. Click to hold one phase, right click for half phase. All right, so you got a half phase, held it, held it. You've been held it. All right, and that takes us to Ironclad. You're up, buddy. What's up? Okay, with his overconfidence and his uh, trusting in his durability, he is doing a non combat. Um, actually, he is doing his full combat move as a jump. Okay. Sure. Always with added gym sound effects. Yes. And the I like doing that. Viper scum, <clears throat> you face a gladiator. It, it really is. Sound effect central. <laughs> All right. So, Ironclad, that's a full move for you? Yes, it is. That is a full combat move. All right. Uh, 40 meters. I crashed out. I'm coming back. Or actually, that was his full uh, non combat because the two meter hexes, I think. His uh, combat jump is 40 meters, so. So, yeah, so that's 20 hexes for a full, a full leap. Or you use your measuring tool to measure that distance, and then you're not paying attention to the hexes so much. Hexes are the it's... enemy. <laughs> hexes are not the enemy. I'm gonna kick well, you from the channel. Get out of here. Oh, hey. Hexes un are until fine. we've got the uh, movement tool in here, they are a regrettable necessity. Oh, and the range tool, and be sure to build in explosions and area of effect, all that kind of stuff. If you're not going to yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. You get it. Not complaining. <laughs> all right, all right. So now the the viper agents are going to move now. So we got these fangs here. These these viper guys. They're going to move. Uh, and I can't get him. One, two, three. And so. He's actually going to move here so he can shoot. He's going to shoot Ironclad. That never ends well. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. So we're going to roll to hit Ironclad. What's your DCV, right? DCV is 6. So he would hit a DCV 7. So I think that counts. Okay. Um, Roll for his futile attempt to damage the gladiator. All right, that's, well, I'm going to do that. <laughs> auto fire. Okay, you have to refresh me on auto fire. Do I have to roll to hit multiple times for auto fire? Uh, auto fire, you roll once, and then every two points under it, you hit again. So I believe he that's tried it. auto firing and hit with one round. Okay, so it was one round, total of 28 body, 9 stun. Moving on. Uh, no, 28 stun, 9 bot. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, you know, wishful thinking. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, I need to. It's uh, two endurance for full move, correct? Um, well, it depends know. on your move. It's per 10. He did a leap. Yeah, it's per 10. It's always per 10 with me. Okay. Oh, for for 10 points of uh, the of travel field. distance. No, it's for 10 points of travel distance. Let's say you only used a part of your movement and you moved 30 out of, say, 60. You'd only pay for the 30 you moved, and that would be three endurance. Okay. And let's see. Uh, and you always round up. 
he had, okay, the twit had done 28th stun, so I <clears throat> felt that. And he's going to do it. This other guy's firing at you. He hits you twice with his auto fire, and that's 27 stun six body. Now you can see. Is Jim being me? Yes. I am. I am showing that agents are to be to be feared. Feared? Oh, I yeah. noticed these scum. Yeah, they 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 will they will poke you, and they will poke you so many times. All right, let's see if this guy hits. He's shooting his auto fire as well. He hits DCB five. That's not going to hit you, right? You said you were Correct. six. Okay. One, two, three. So he's going to be between these cars if he'll fit. He doesn't fit. So I'm going to stop him right here. Change my lift height back down a little bit. All right. Always keep your lift height down at the bottom. Yep. Okay. Um, and then this guy, he's going to one, two, three. Now these guys are going to move around. One, two, three. And he's going to shoot you. Ironclad. DCB5 misses. It's the way it should be. It's the way it should be. They should miss. You were just unlucky. All right, and this last guy, he's going to move somewhere. Where is he going to move? He's going to go. He's got a full move. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now he sees down the street, he sees Kinetic. Oh, no, there's a guy in the way. He doesn't see Kinetic yet. That's fine. All right. So I think we're good with the Viper Fangs. Now let's move on to the Coatles. Yeah, you're not going to like these guys. Uh, okay. So what you don't know is that... Oh, they look so cool. These guys. No. Wrong angle. Ah. And these guys are funny. The, the way the minis worked out, the, um, the controls show up kind of in the wrong place. So that's fine. I'm going to just turn this guy around here. Yeah, they're all weird and twisted, aren't they? Yeah, well, the minis are weird, too. They're trying to be all action-packed and whatnot. Yeah, G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip, right? Yep. <clears throat> Something like that. All right. And then... Uh, oh, um, you have you been checking the range between your... No, I haven't. Uh, ...agents? No, no, I haven't. They have skill levels that just that just cancel those out because that's what I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and defender, oh yeah, defender was the one that uh, we were having the issues with, and he got shunted over to non-combatant. My mistake. So twenty-three meters. And what is the, what is the, um, let's see, distance, 23, and actually, so minus 3 to hit. So let's see if this if I did this right. So if we roll, he hits DCV two. All right. So from up above, uh, right, auto fire starts coming right down at you, Ironclad, from the build the the brick build building. There's a couple of guys up there that are shooting at you. <coughs> they just pepper the intersection full of Viper blaster fire. Dishonorable scum have revealed their intention to strike <clears throat> in a cowardly manner. That's a okay. cowardly. It's an ambush. All right. Yes. So that's 20, 30 meters. So 
So let's put that in. So minus four for that. All right, these other two guys are going to shoot at kinetic. What's your... Uh... Uh, my OCV and DCV are nine. Yeah. Nine. Seven almost hits. Okay, so again, this car that's next to you starts getting peppered. Uh, and this and the uh, sidewalk around you gets peppered with uh, with viper fire. <clears throat> All right, and that ends the coattles. Now it's time for the coil agents. All right. By the way, I noticed this, uh, Brennell. The heads up displays when they are collapsed are fine, but there is definitely an or a layer order. Uh, there is. Where, yeah. Absolutely. So, you have to arrange them in the order that the top is also the top layer. Otherwise, when you expand, you have the other sheets getting in the way. Yep, you're spot on correct. And I believe it's because I've got the controller order incorrect. So what I originally planned was controller 1 through to 10 would be the same order as they show on screen. And in my rush to push it out, I didn't do that. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been nice and easy, right? Because like, the first one, the second one, the third one. Right. Okay. But yes, it is. That was the plan. And the next release will have it in that order because every time I load it now, I go, really? <laughs> okay, Mac, does Kinetic have a way to get up by those idiots? Um, he runs really fast. Uh, actually, fly as long as he's on the surface so he can run up the wall. Okay. Are you willing to deal with them? I got the ones in the building over there. Okay. Understood. The scum on the ground are mine. Has anyone thrown a car yet? <laughs> no. Nothing better than seeing cars flying around. <laughs> I haven't reached an enemy vehicle yet. Ah. Uh. Gotta find out how tough they are. I'm, you I'm can't like, be smashing was people it, with uh, cars. I'm like, what is it? Charged Crusader who was collateral damage man? Uh, yeah, yeah. Charged Crusader <laughs> had no no mercy. <laughs> it's like everything in his radius died. So tell me, what is Ironclad's DCV after his uh, full combat move there? Uh, it remains six. Okay. All right. More agents start firing uh, their blasters. This one looks like it's a quite a bit bigger of a shot. So it's more like a, instead of a pew pew gun, it's a boom gun. <clears throat> and so that guy uh, shot past you. Okay. That's the hen a heavy venomous there? No. Whoops. Oh, nice. Screw F the flipping. Ah. Pick him up and hit F. There you go. So which one was it that had the boom gun? This guy right here. Uh, right there. So he's the got a boom gun. Okay. And so does this guy right here. I don't know if I can do this. It's not. There you go. Right, right Him? There. Yep. He's another coil agent. So he is going to attack you as well. He's basically the same distance. He hits DCV 8. I think that hits. Yeah. So this is his sledgehammer. Oh dear, that's a lot of dice. Okay, 40 stun. Oh, he has my attention now. <laughs> So Kinetic's holding his turn, right? Half turn. I did a half move. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't check. <clears throat> yeah, I can see you held of some nature. Okay, so, uh, yeah. 40 stun, 12 body. Let's do a knockback the, roll. Uh, the, bo the body bounces. I okay. didn't take any body. That's fine. I can still knock you back. Oh, I thought it, I th yeah, I you thought it was to... only if body was taken... Does the knockback occur? So, no, and his, and his body is given. All right. So, question: 
Uh, do you as you do you have anything that helps reduce minus fourteen meter? Uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me double check my sheet. But uh, iron body knockback resistance minus fourteen meters. All right. So you don't get knocked back because it just blinks. But you could tell that would have knocked someone flat. All right. So, you, so that's good. The coil agents. Let's see. Did I get all of them? one problem here. No, there's still one guy I haven't done yet. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, he moves and that's it. Alright, so now heavy venomists, these guys uh, have power armor. And this guy is just, uh, let's see, got one guy right here. Boom, boom, boom. He, he comes out and stomps on the pavement as he comes. And he is... Expand distance. Uh, quick roll and dice rolls. Okay, so let's measure distance first. And roughly 30. For, it's, yeah, f for accuracy, top down is best. And <laughs> plus two. So if I remember correctly, I need to put uh, minus two for skill rolls or plus two, right? No, it's not inverted anymore. Straight number. Oh, okay. So I can put a two in here to, to hit. I didn't yeah, do that with that. the other guys. So, guys lucked out on that. I figure it balanced out because the first guys I didn't even count for range. So, congratulations. Yeah, good enough. L lucky you. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, he needs more skill rolls, uh, more skill levels for range. All right, because he needs to just blast. Okay, so he's now going to try to hit you. And let's see how he does. He hits. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's impressive. Nice. So he rolls a one one four, <clears throat> and he has a jackhammer blaster rifle. I can hear them dice rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so twelve dice, forty two stun, twelve body, and I don't think we're going to have any. Okay, so that's ow. Okay. I don't think we're going to have any knockback, but just because it's fun, we're going to roll and see. Oh, what the heck is that? Two dice. Seven. Well, how much body did you roll? Twelve. So yeah, so that's so five. 10 meters so of five. knockback, but you have 14 meter knockback resistance, right? Yeah, so, yeah right. it's almost not worth checking him. You'd oh. have to have a very lucky, oh, very lucky day. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. Trust me. It'll happen. Yeah, but you've almost knocked him unconscious anyway. A couple more blows like that, and he's out. <clears throat> and that's just post... Uh, that's just 12. All right, so that ends around. Kinetic, are you going to do anything? Yes, Kinetic runs across this car, runs across that car, and runs to that car. All right, so we'll consider that all moved. So now we're in post-12. You may take your recovery and get back, You'll need it. get back some of that stun you lost. Let me know when you're done with yeah. that. Okay, and when you're done, we're on uh, segment two. So you are phasing right now, Senor Kinetic. What are you going to do? Okay, Kinetic is going to uh, run up this building, stand next to the Koto agent, right? Uh, do I need to hold the alt tab? Well, that one right there, and he's going to snap his finger. What one right there? Yeah, that one right there. Let's put you right here. Okay, you're in the hex next. So, 
And that Basically. is going to be what is that? Uh, supersonic finger snap blast 3d6. It's uh, no normal defenses. The defense is safe environment, high pressure, or armored. And I'm not sure where I'd find that. Oh, there's a rapid. What, on your card sheet when you roll it? Yeah, I'm trying to see where it's at. It's under, it should be under maneuver. Well, uh, no, under no, dice it won't rolls. be. It's straight under rolls. All damage rolls are moved into rolls. Maneuvers are to hit rolls, yeah, unless you're rolling to hit, but it won't be put under maneuvers because it's not a martial arts maneuver, is it? Martial arts maneuvers go there. Okay, yeah. so it'd be uh, just under <clears throat> quick roll? No, just oh. straight to hit roll with modifiers. Yeah, so, oh, okay. Yeah, so normally you'd have your distance tab open for ranged attacks and you'd just simply punch in the distance there and that will calculate a negative for, for distance. And Which then there isn't, there isn't any because you're next to him. But that normally you'd have that open if you're doing range stuff. I don't think you, you'll need that. But then you look through your skill rolls and see if you have any combat levels that you can add. And those go down. You can punch those in by the to hit. Now, Brenda, it would be brilliant if there was a way to hit a checkbox or something next to those skills that would automatically add them into the to hit. So you could just go tick, 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 and then... You can. You can make your own dice roll and build them in permanently to the dice uh, roll. Yeah, okay, fine. All right, so then um, you just put, put that number down in the to hit, and then you can click to hit, and it will roll your to hit roll. So, yeah, your first key point is, do you have any combat skill levels? If you do... No, I do not. Bang. Nothing to put there, then. So it's actually just a straight to hit roll for you. So you click on the text of the word to hit, under which tab or under dice. oh under rolls under dice rolls so that's yeah. the other one you just leave open all the time is dice rolls because that's a a list of all the okay different... i have a vibro grip there uh dizzy supersonic finger snap i have it there okay there you I'll go just... so you you have to first roll to hit the supersonic one is actually yeah, damage if you hit yeah yeah well, well, well yeah yes you did it in the wrong order but yes, you roll to hit first to see if you hit, like standard champion. Which right? you did. So you roll to hit, yeah. And then um, you do the damage afterwards if you get the damage. Okay, I see that. Okay, so this is a killing attack, yeah? No, it's a no, no, a no normal oh, defense. The NMD. defense is... ND. Is he wearing a helmet, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, life support, um, life support, high pressure or armored hit. So if he doesn't have one of those two things, then he takes the full damage. He has a helmet and armor, but it's not life support. So... It's up to you as the GM. If, if you think it's pressure-worthy resistance, because he's using air pressure, right? Yeah, he's Basically. snapping his finger. It's a supersonic snap, so it's kind of like a sonic boom right next Basically, to Basically, it would need to be a, the sort of sealed helmet where you'd have to have a speaker. Yeah, they know, don't fly that high, so I don't think they'll have that. All right. So, and there's no knockback because that's an NND. All right. So, all right, you're, you've heard him. He's bloody. Ah, all right. So he took his damage. You are now uh, done. Yeah. Okay. Is, is he wearing armor though? Yes. So did you deduct the armor from the damage? It's a non-armal defense. Oh, it is an NND, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you're right. So so nothing up. helped him. I was, just straight in. Yeah, I was painful. I was thinking of that. All right, so that was two. Now it's three. Ironclad, you're up. Okay. Experience as a gladiator. Uh, sometimes you have to take the small fry first. <laughs> I am doing a combat jump. 
up to here. Okay. And it's definitely less than 20 meters tall, and it was less than 40 meters along, so I can make the jump. How your insurance? Uh, let's see. That was about, uh, I'm going to call it three, yeah, because sure. it was more than 20. And I am going... He tried to shoot me in the back. I have no problem uh, belting him in the back. It was more of a right shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I presume that he is a DCV 10 or less. Yes. What are you hitting him with? A lot of dice. Full strength punch damage. Nice. And I didn't even do anything like a uh, uh, any of the maneuvers. So, okay, so how much armor do they have? So they've got sixteen defense. So that's still not going to be enough to do anything useful. No, that puts him at thirty-one, which puts him at minus five. Yeah. He's, he's a zombie. Now roll two he's dice. Out. Roll roll two dice in your quick roller. Okay, one second. Ah, quick roll. Two. Eleven from thirteen is two, which is four inches back. So he goes off the edge of the building and then straight down. Boom! Yeah, that's the way to leave him. <laughs> <laughs> Embedded in the earth below. Yeah, he's break dancing <laughs> down on the sidewalk now. Literally broken. Yeah. He's broken dancing. Yeah, what a painful way to die, falling off a, a basically two-story building. Mm-hmm. All right. Although those stories are high. I'd say that's a four-story building. Yeah, he's, he's going to suffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, Kinetic, you're up again. Now what? <laughs> you're breaking all... All right, what are you knocking over just so you can measure a building? <laughs> okay, so how does, how does like, uh, martial arts move? Do, do I still roll two hit and then the rapid punch, or do I click the rapid punch? Do you have a martial arts maneuver called rapid punch? That's the first question. Yes, I do. If you do, then it's brought it in. If you hover over it, it will tell you all the modifiers. So if you tooltip over it and hold there, you'll see... Plus what one OCV, negative two DCV, and it's a nine D6. Okay, it will never roll the damage for you. Those entries don't roll damage. What they do is they apply all the modifiers and save you typing them in. Yeah. So it, all of them are to hit rolls, basically, the same as the one down in rolls. But this time it's got the modifier built in for you. So you and can. Then... it will roll to hit. Then you look at the dice it does and you go to the quick roller and you just type into the quick roll of the dice and press the button. Okay, yeah? so okay, so I'll do the... the... Uh, uh. Yeah, rapid punch, seven or less. He tries to avoid. So he's going to abort to dodge. But I'm no, not I sure. Don't know how how yeah, does, yeah. How does dodge work on the stick? How does that work? It's supposed to give <laughs> yeah. him, I think, plus five DCV. <clears throat> That's a so, uh, martial dodge. Yep. So that is going to make his DCV something. Does it actually give 5 DCV? I thought it was... No, and I could be wrong, right? So okay. first block is targeted against the opponent's attack. Correct. He's not doing a block, he's doing a so dodge. dodge just adds 5 to his DCV. So... So dodge got converted into a dice maneuver in 6th edition? No, well, I think... I, I, I don't think so. I think it's... Uh, I thought it was just a okay. I'm not sure why it's rolling. So, 
it, it's rolling because it, it was put there so you could see the modifiers for dodge yeah. not so you could click on it the other thing is all the ones that are fairly normal in the next version i'm getting them to say xyz dodged aborted and dodged yeah there you and go it won't roll the dice okay so he's going to try to dodge you mr kinetic so when you try your little rapid punch <clears throat> he's got a 10 dcv against that so i would have missed <clears throat> well, what did you get with your punch? You got a no. You got an OCV of seven, seven. So DCV of seven. So yeah, you missed. All right, sweet. It worked. Well, I'm now checking the rules in the background because there you go. You know, I'm not, <clears throat> That's I'm what we playing. need. We need a a rules secretary during our games. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, you always got to have a rule lawyer in every game, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't want a lawyer. <clears throat> we just want a secretary to go look it up. We want someone conscious of uh, the responsibility. <laughs> no, I want someone on my side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in which case, whatever the GM says works. It's your table, your game, right? Because I'm the judge. So, lawyer, you're in contempt. Yeah. You're in contempt. <clears throat> Asked and answered. All right. Uh, uh, that's the judge that declares contempt. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So, uh, Kinetic, you've moved. And so that takes us to the Viper Fangs. So these guys have lost all their targets. Because <clears throat> they're up on Small buildings move. now. So we're going to full move. One, two, one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six. Don't cluster them, Jim. Don't cluster them. <laughs> they don't have any area of effect attacks. One. One, two, three, yeah. four, five. Yeah. Six. I thought that until I first saw the first first car flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, oh, yeah, that is an area effect attack, isn't it? Mm. Let's see, that's probably more than 100 cubic meters of water. So. Okay, just, just, just to correct the, the judge, it's plus three against attacks. Okay. What are, what are you talking about? Uh, the dodge. Well, that's plus regular. Three. That's the regular maneuver. This is a martial dodge. They have viper oh, brawling. Oh, they have, <clears throat> oh, they have oh, viper God. brawling as a martial arts, which includes the martial that's dodge right. maneuver. <clears throat> it, oh, they, wow. they do indeed. That training in the gym really paid off. They hey, have anything to do. Nest leader takes good care of his people. Okay, all those guys have moved. Let's time let's the coaddles get to move now. That's that's up on the buildings. Yay, some action. <laughs> Alright, so this coaddle is gonna turn around after seeing that you punched his friend off the roof. <clears throat> he looks a little concerned that you're so close to him. <clears throat> Good, you face me, fool. Right? So, I do believe... Oh, I, this doesn't work. We need we need something that uh, that actually... Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the problem? <clears throat> no, I wanted uh, something that he could stand on that showed he was flying. So, I guess I could do this, and we will make it... Uh, Viper green. Because you can. <clears throat> so I'm going to stand him up on top of this. I think that will work. Oh, that poor fool. Yeah. So he's uh, he flies up in the air. We're going to say <clears throat> uh, 10 inches, I believe. Let's look at his movement real quick. Oh, that moron. It just swats him with a water tower. Um, no. He flies no. up 20 inches. Because <laughs> he doesn't want you to hit him. Oh, he is. Thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. And he's then going to... Uh, let's see. He's going to drop a... Uh, So he's a now grenade 20, or something? Two, two. Oh, tabs don't work, by the way. 
Well, between fields. Uh, yeah, in the in the distance field, I just hit like two because he's one, two. He's actually three. So I hit three, and then I hit tab to go to the height, and it didn't work. No, it will not. That's yeah. why I've always said in all the videos, click in the next yep. box. Yep. Um, Unity does not support using tab because it supports game controllers, um, which don't have tab. <laughs> All right, so he is going to uh, use no name supplied. That sounds like a good attack. Yeah. <laughs> so basically he's dropping a grenade or something? No, he doesn't have a grenade. He is just going to use his killing attack on you. And so he hits uh, DCV2, so that misses. So he flew up in the air like, Gah! And he just starts shooting at you as he flies back up into the air. So he's 20 inches above this building, signified by the green block. All right. <laughs> so that ends his turn. Let's move to the other building where the other coaddle is going to. One, two, Did he three, put himself four. right where I want him. Whoops. Stay. Stay, boy. A lot of collision problems on this roof. No, there wasn't. I had a spotlight on there. I just added a spotlight for fun. Wait a minute. We don't need a spotlight. I will be right back. Plumbing calls. Okay. All right. So he is going to be here. I am going to drop a cube for him. I'll make it green. I should make it transparent. That would make sense. All right. So now here's one, two, three, four. So that's eight meters. And 20 meters up, which is 22 meters. What do you know? Nice calculations. Pythagoras, small Greek That's guy. That's right, yeah. Why don't we have smart Greek guys anymore? All the Greeks that I've ever met have... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I've never okay. seen any bright <laughs> Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> just... Ah, he hits DCV negative two. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, you made it transparent. Nice. Your wish, is, your wish is my command. Right? Uh, that's why you're here. All right. So, excellent. So he misses. That's just the way it seems to be. Uh, now this guy next to you, though, it's his turn. He is. Okay, I am back. All right. Good. So one guy flew up in the air. He. This guy jumps up into the air as well, flies backward while he's shooting at you. He is uh, now 20 meters up and two, me two, four meters away. So that's 20. He rolls to hit with his blaster. He hits DZV4. That's not going to, that's not going to work for you. Oh wait, he doesn't get to move. He aborted. Never mind. I forgot about that. He aborted to dodge. So he's he's still a sucker right there. All right. That ends the coattles. Now the coils, they uh, can't get to you either at this point. Wow, there's a guy floating in midair. That is cool. Transparent cubes. I like it. All right. So the uh, coattles are now going to move. I mean the coils. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's his 12-meter run. Two, and twelve. It's his twelve meter run. This is twelve meter run, taking cover behind the car. All right, I think that's it. I think I moved those guys. All right, heavy venomous. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. That ends segment four. Now on segment five, Ironclad. What you going to do? I. Let's see. Um, with my combat jumping of 40, which means I can do 20, 20 inches vertically. Yep, that's a full move. You're going to move through? Um, move by, grab, and as we're coming down to the ground, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put him below me. <laughs> Give him the people's elbow. Gotcha. No, I'm, I'm literally doing <clears throat> a grab. Yep. And this that is a hand to hand maneuver. All right. So my so Mark, intended landing point is here. Okay. Actually it wind up being more there. Do you agree that the uh, move move by and grab would be hand to hand? Yeah. Oh, that was miserable. I but, missed. But you miss him. Yeah. <laughs> he manages to duck out of the way. Just you know, a little more left azimuth, and uh, and you go flying past him, just barely miss you reaching out for him. And he's like, oh, and you've dropped past him down onto the ground. Okay, move yourself down there. Which is exactly where the coils are wanting to have you. So that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> we got some heavy venomous and coils that are running down the street toward you. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So that is Ironclad's turn. That ends segment five. We're now on six. Kinetic, you're back up. Okay. Matt. I'm going to do a rapid punch against the guy that's right next. To me. Actually, I'm going to move so I get my... Um, <laughs> I got extra PD as long as I'm moving. So he's going to run around and get him from behind. <laughs> so got to keep moving. Okay. There you go. Well, there you don't go. Your mouse, your mouse betrayed you, my friend. Here, I'll, I'll grab it for you. It's got a sticky mouse. I see. Yeah, that. it just started like yesterday. Okay, so I hit DC thirteen. It looks. Like. Indeed, you did. So he's gonna take it. Go ahead and roll your damage. This is an auto fire attack. No, it's just nineties. Thirty five stun. Yeah, 35 stun and 10. Okay. Can I ask a question? I don't know. Um, that was it right there, wasn't uh, it? And, uh, the character sheets. All the bits and bobs scattered around, all the lookup tables, all the rest of it. Is anyone actually even looking at that stuff? At the moment, I am actually uh, looking specifically for the OCV and DCV for move by and move through and such. So, yes. 
Okay, you do know you can find them in your sheet, on your um, HUD. combat record, you know, your on-screen combat record, just by hovering over the mover in the <clears> combat <throat> record. They will tell you the modifiers. Ah. I, had, I had forgotten to check that, but, so thank you for the reminder. Sir, no, the only reason I'm pointing out is not to, in any way, <clears throat> critique. Um, it, it's, I was just trying to wonder whether all this space around here is actually usable. I mean, it looks good, and people think they're joining a normal table, if you know what I mean. I'm just actually really wondering what it's doing. No, you don't. I, no like, one's going to use You're talking time. about over on your little plank that has your dice roller and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, your the, player home, as it were. Yeah. Likewise, the, the, the tiles that have the uh, endurance stun and body... Those are not useful if you're using the one on your mini, right? They're not That's connected. Correct. And then They're you have, uh, you just have this counter. I don't know what that's for. I think the character sheets are useful because I I have one pulled up on my screen. Yeah. But, um, so a character sheet there might be helpful. But um, yeah, I don't think like the the rolls and stuff would be. I mean, all okay. the the DM. Uh, I got a question. See, what my team does um, is when they play... Sorry, sorry to interrupt the flow of combat. So, no, you're fine. Literally, one more question. Um, what my team does is they usually have the character sheet in front of them in the real world because they find it easier to look there than to try and zoom in here and look on this character sheet here. Yeah? Um, so they normally have one printed out in front of them and they've got it right literally in the real world. Right. Um, right because... Um, go on. Sorry. I said, yeah, because when you're over here at your mini to go to look at the character sheet, you have to scroll all the way across the table to look at your character sheet anyway. Yeah, so you could use yeah, a fixed camera if you really needed to do that. But, like, well, then you just press, you know, what, control one or something like that, and it'll move you, move your camera. And you could, you could indeed do it with a camera. But the only reason I was asking was I just don't think it, they're, they're innately useful. And I put them in so people felt that it was a role-playing game. I'm just not actually sure people are going to use them that much. Yeah, no. And the I, other one is, I think the uh, the table real estate that they're using could be uh, condensed by just having uh, one visible page for the character, and then you could move uh, or yeah, no, could, it's all right. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry for interrupting the flow, and I do apologize. I just I noticed. I suppose from my point of view, is experience. The other one, Jim, is from your point of view, are you finding the turn controller okay to use? Yes. No, I like all That's the HUD different. stuff is very good because then no matter where I'm looking, I still have it right there. And I can move it around. I, I need to, by the way, because it doesn't collapse or anything. It'd be nice if I could collapse it. Collapse what? Sorry. The turn it's controller HUD. Oh, no, yeah, the turn controller doesn't collapse. No, no, it's a constant reminder. But it's uh, it's feasible for me to do that. You know, the same technology is already right. in, in the other stuff, so I could do it. And, yeah. and, and that's kind of the feedback I was looking for. If you feel that you could do with that real estate back, you know, that screen. Occasionally, occasionally. So I, just, I have to, like, drag it down to the bottom of the screen so that I can look at whatever I'm looking at, then I drag it back up again. It's So it's fine, but if I could collapse it, that would be even better. Okay, sure, I'll take that on board. All right, so I'm so sorry to interrupt. Please continue. I yeah. do apologize. Yeah, rude. All right, so... Yeah. That's what you get for finding tech support, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> now they won't leave me alone. They keep calling me about my car warranty. Jeez. All right. Um, yeah. Okay, so Kinetic, uh, you didn't roll your knockback, so roll two dice in your quick roller for knockback. It might be good to have a... Quick roll. I guess you could create a dice roller for knockback that just rolls your two dice or what have you, right? Yeah, you could. Um, I thought about a knockback section under combat. Um, see whether that would work. Okay, so you rolled but, a seven. That That's three inches in the old school. One, two, three. So that would knock him down. And then, yeah, he'll fall all the way to the alley. I'm good with that. All right. So. <laughs> Oh, you knock him off. His his foot catches the lip of the building as he topples backward. And just like a true, you know, parkour maneuver, he just breaks his back on the next lip of the building and falls into the alley. <laughs> you know, like a like the scene from from Titanic where the guy is falling 
and he hits the rail and it just spins him. Right? Did you remember that? That was the that was the best part of the whole movie. It was. Who unlocked the base? The f- oh, I guess that was just me right clicking. Sorry. Okay, so uh, yeah, he's down on the ground. He is out for the count. So there you go. He's done. Normally we'd have you roll more dice, but I think that's just egregious at this point. All right. So kinetic, you're done. That ends the phase. So now we'll go to segment seven and kinetic. <laughs> goes again. You get to go again because you're just a speedy guy. Now that guy's twenty inches up in the air. I wish there was a way to say. Oh, maybe there is. That's what the um, numbers on the bottom of the um, bars yeah. are. We normally put one of them to be blue. Um, and then we use it for height. So you can just indicate height. Want me to... Uh, oh, you, you'll be doing that. You should probably get the... Okay. Uh, All right, so he's 20 inches up in the air. All right, or 20 meters, I mean. Go ahead. Kinetic, what you going to do? 20. Okay, hey. Uh, what's his name? Ironclad, I got to get the guys on the ground. I can't hit the guy in the air. And he's going to run down the building and run towards the other guys over here. Ironclad. No, Ironclad. Ironclad sounds like a bomb specialist. I think i Oh. Is it yeah, actually sure. is that measurement actually doing the hypotenuse of that move? No. So it's what four and he could, doesn't do the hypotenuse because he has to run down the building. So we right, got four that's stories which Yep. Four stories which should be about twelve inches. Okay, so twelve inches and now I'll go from meters. the bottom. So six six twelve meters. See, and this is why hexes have to die. No, 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 no. They will never die. They will. I'll make it my mish. (laughs) (laughs) And my ruler agrees with you, by the way. (laughs) Twelve. I was was guesstimating on three meters per, per floor. See, that piece of information has been always useful to you since you looked, at it, looked it up, right? No. I've always figured that uh, a room is like nine feet tall plus a bit for the uh, structure between yeah, so one, like, one floor and the next. That's approximate three meters. Right. So in, in the real world, that's an that's a inch and a half. So he should be about right there. Okay. In the hex-obsessed world. That's right. That's right. In the real world. The hexed world? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Kinetic, you are now just perfect a perfect target. I love it. Yeah, but at his speed with his DCV. Right. Yeah. Actually, that... That is something. Uh, okay, ironclad. It's segment eight. Your move. Okay. okay so, so what you should do now is throw the car and then get inside a building and laugh when they can't fire at you. <laughs> <laughs> I am not charged. I am not the infamous charged crusader. It's cowardly not to beat something up with your own two fists. I'm going to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just to have interest, are you recording, Jim, or not? Yes. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. I don't know if it's working, okay. but I am recording. It's my first time using OBS cover. to record. That that was a half, half move. Uh, am I able to take a recovery? Is recovery full phase, isn't it? I think recovery is a full full phase. You can't really do anything but hunker down and take deep breaths. 
if I remember correctly. So most of my rules memory is of the wrong edition and from a long time ago. So welcome to call me out anytime I get it wrong. We should get Chris Godwin in, Godwin in here. There you go. There's, that's the rules lawyer, right? Okay. All right. So you know. The answer is off the top of his head. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have a. <clears throat> you have a. So here's something that would be really handy uh, is for me to look at. Have, be able to dock a heads up display for the players, too, for all the characters. Sorry, what do you mean? Like, right now I have four heads-up displays for my four uh, types of NPCs, right? So I've got, yes, I've got four agents, types of agents, even though there's a bunch out there. So I have four of those, and I'll just expand them and look at them. It would be nice for me to be able to put the players up, or maybe from the turn viewer be able to click and bring up uh, a heads-up display or something so I could just double-check his movement, like, because I think he moved too far, Right. So instead of going um, over to the players, I think I think he moved a full move instead of a half move, right? So I may want to just go check the math on his movement. Okay, you are, so you are correct. I I inadvertently had done. Actually, see, if, I think he gets three I, inches. If I jump, I didn't. If I jumped, which was the movement mode I had selected, ah. I am well under a half move. Because I move 12 meters and my normal combat move is 40. Right. So that would okay. be fine. You could jump behind it as a half move. But, but I can answer that even more carefully. Um, you've seen the movement distance thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, it will show you an announce in game. He has leaped, run, whatever, whatever he's doing, X amount. And it will tell you whether it's under his half or not. Nice. Yeah. Yep. As he does it, so okay. as a GM, when he does the move, you'll know. You'll That's just right. sit there and go, "Wow, well, actually, you know, you moved over half." So yeah, no, good. get on that, get on that. That's yeah, I'm doing that, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All be right, second in the background, I'm programming. <laughs> clickety clackety clickety clack. Okay, all right. So you're half moved behind the big vehicle. So the well, that's a lovely view. I'm inside of a building. Oh. Yeah, there's some nice stuff inside the buildings, actually. Uh, By the way, contents of this tanker aren't flammable, are they? Uh, there are those uh, universal caution signs. Yeah, this one doesn't have that on there, but that doesn't mean that's not what I intended. Yeah, don't, don't, don't forget, fundamentally, all the uh, agents planted that there, so you would hide behind it when they ambushed you. That's right. And then they could blow it up. Nice. Okay, guys, it's, it's, it's my dinner, so I'm going to scoot All off right, for dinner. thanks I'll, for joining I'll, us. I'll, I'll scoot back after dinner in about an hour's time if you're still playing. Okay. If not, I, I'm going to want to grab people and talk about how, what they thought and what they want improved and all kinds of things. So Good. I will speak to you guys later. I'm just going to disappear off now. All it's right. fun watching you play. If you get any questions, save them, yeah? Yep, we will do. In that case... Write down a comment. Let it come to mind. Okay, so we've got a Fang attacking. He does have distance. So let's just see how this goes. Whoops, that didn't work. 32, just say 32 meters. <clears throat> All right, so he's going to attack Kinetic, which is, a, a, so when Kinetic <laughs> has a DCV a zero, that would hit, here. that would hit. All right, and then. I mean, uh, he wouldn't even have hit the <laughs> hex he was aiming at if he was trying for <laughs> just hitting a spot. Because a, uh, an area that cannot dodge is DCV3. Okay, so this next Fang is going to do the same thing. He's got the same basic range. He has D uh, DCV minus one. <laughs> uh, 
One, two, three. He's just screaming as he charges into the fight. Now he's got a different range, so we're just going to calculate that real quick. Do, 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 do. 23. I do like the range calculator. That's cool. That's a good feature. And he rolls to hit. I have to say that the, that the luck for the Viper agents has been outright snake bet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like Tabletop Simulator having to... It sticks me in the measurement mode. One, two, three. He's going to stay near that. His range is close enough to the same. Just roll the hit. Get done with that. One, two, three. Uh, he'll move over by this car. His range is pretty close to the same. Oh, I didn't add... Not only at DCV5, I didn't add their skill levels. See, that's the other thing I forgot to do last time, too. So they have plus two. I'll put that in there. And they would still all have missed. Okay, Coil Fang. So he'll move there. He gets to hit two. DCP three is not good enough. Coil, coil. All right. That's all the dudes. That's all the fangs. Now let's do the quaddles real quick. This guy is flying. He is going to move. I can't really move him. Oh, I know what I can do. Yeah, that's way too much work. I was like, I could lock him in the air, but that's just too much work. All right, so <clears throat> he is going to uh, attack. He's got a 20 height, 20, 40, 40 height. And let's just say that's five that direction. That's a minus five to hit. Oh, wrong guy. So let's say now uh, it's 40 height, 4, that's fine. It's minus 5 to hit. He's going to shoot at Ironclad. Okay, and he has I has plus 2 to hit, I think, for skill rolls. Yep. Uh. While using jetpack, another plus two. So that's plus four. All right. Ah, yeah, it's DCV zero. Dang it. Okay, so this guy is going to move over to the edge of the building. He's going to stay up in the air. He's still way up there. So we'll say he's 40 also. And... 20 here. So that's minus 5 to hit. He's got plus 4 skill levels. He's going to attack. Oh, it's DCV 5. Does that get you? No, it does not. Dang it. I am DCV 6. Dang it, dang it. All right. So that's the end of the coattles. The coils now get to move. These guys are sharpshooters. Let's see how they do. I should push F1 again to get my pointer back. I hate that. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, is there still a minus one if you do a half move? Minus one to hit. I think I think there is, isn't there? Uh, let me check the uh, reference sheet. See if I can find something. I recall that being an annoying thing that we had to deal with. 30 inches range. Minus four. It's got plus four skill levels. So that basically count. So I was right. Do you remember when I said they have skill levels that counter all of the range mods? Yeah, I see. I was right. They really actually do. 
All right, Kinetic. He's going to attack you. Let's see what he does. He hits a DCV-10. That hits he hits you. me. That hits you, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here it comes. But he... But he, Kinetic was definitely moving. Okay, so, so this, the sledgehammer is a 14 die attack. You're going to take 55 stun, 18 body. And then we're going to roll some knockback because I love knockback. Okay. Nine. So anyways, so, let's, let me take a let me take a look. Um, I have 16 resistant PD and 25. So I take 25 stun and two body. Oh, and um, his running is bought as flight on a surface, so you oh, get an extra. Oh, D6 I get to reduce. I get to reduce your not the roll by a D six. Oh, you get three D six instead of no, two D six. The other way around. Oh, right, one D six instead. Correct. Of, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll that. So that's a three because you don't have ground traction to assist you. So that's Correct. 15 inches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, But each, 11, each hex is 2, 2 inches, remember. 15. Hey, I know, but I'm counting remember. in inches. So knock back. So here in 6th edition, this is the thing I noticed, is they still do everything the same. It's just they don't, they don't use the same words. So what they do is they say, when counting knockback, you subtract the roll of the die, in this case... Uh, I rolled a three, so I subtract that from the body and then multiply times two to get meters. <laughs> so 18, 70, 60, 15. So I knocked you back 30 meters, which really is 15 hexes, which is what I just moved you 15 hexes because that's the actual dice roll. 18 minus three is 15. So it's really 15 inches, 15 hexes back. But if we want to keep everything in meters, I have to double it so that I put the meters right. Does that make sense? It's kind of dumb, but it's what they do. All right, you're prone. And the coil agent goes, ha ha! Because they don't hit very oh, often. Um I do got breakfall, so do I get a break? Oh, you can roll that. Otherwise, I'm going to roll uh, uh, seven and a half more dice of damage. So, yeah, roll breakfall. He he didn't hit anything in the knockback. Correct. So, so. Your, so your knockback is inches divided by two in dice. For every yeah, two inches. but I thought the knockback damage only occurs if you hit something when nope. you're knocked back. You hit the ground. No. Oh, you take half damage if you hit the ground. Yeah. He skids across the. And I succeeded by six. All right. So, I I don't recall the breakfall rules, but I believe that you don't take any knockback damage, and you land on your feet. Right. Okay. So you're not prone. You're on your feet, and you kind of skid backwards. You know. And, and kind of we'll roll backwards, but a controlled roll. Yeah, and then you come up on your feet and slide back another few more inches, and you're in this attack-ready, you know, uh, position where you're you're uh, you know you're like at a three-point stance, right, like a football player. Right. And then you look back. Uh, you you at that point, you know, you're you're looking down at the street, and then you just snap your head up, and uh, and like just grimace, uh, you know, growl. Urgh. All right. So we have another coil agent, though, that uh, may want to drop a kaboom. Let's see. And I think I'm stunned because my con is 23 and I yes, took good. 25. Oh, yeah. Now I took 25 stuns, so yeah, I'm stunned. So there is a uh, a combat tab, and you can check the stunned box. I'm not sure what that does or how that communicates anything to anything, but it would be fun to find out. Uh, 
All right. Okay. So that coil agent moved, and he is going to... And I had said I was taking cover behind the vehicle. Yes, he's not going to shoot you. He's going to shoot kinetic. It's a straight shot. It's a lot of distance, but let's see what it looks like. So I do like being able just to go measure to here, and that's 60. So 60 is minus and, and 6. And you are using the top view, top yeah, down yeah, view yeah, for yep. accuracy? Yep. Yeah, I move, I move that. Yeah, sure. No, that's good to double check all, of, especially while we're all playtesting and figuring it out. So I count 60. He's got four skill levels to try to hit you. Let's just see what happens. He hits DCV9. Does that work? Uh, I'm DCV9. Sweet. Uh, let's, let's see if we can knock you all the way or off the table. What is his what is his base OCV? You said you oh. said he had four four levels of skill for reducing range penalty. Well, it's f just and four combat skill levels, so they it's just oh, yeah. it's a wash. So my question here is: If you're stunned, do you have a DCV of anything higher than zero? I believe you default. Uh, I think you're half. I think you're half DCV if you're stunned. Oh, yeah. Okay. And are you also prone if you're stunned? Yeah. I, I, I think so. Let's see. Oh, kinetic is now prone. Kinetic is no longer prone. I like it. At least it makes a record of it. I don't know if it... So the coil agent, but if you're prone, you also are very hard to hit from a distance and very easy to hit when right next to you, right? Right. I don't suppose it's under maneuvers. Let's see. Okay, I'm checking under effects of damage in, uh, what is it, Champions Complete? Okay, I'm just going to look at this. Uh, it does not declare that a person is uh, knocked down or prone when they are stunned. Per, per page uh, 158. Of, okay, it says uh, here prone. Complete. If they're prone, they are half DCV, and hit location is normal. It's just saying it's half DCV. It doesn't say anything about anything. Oh, that's DCV modifiers, yeah. Prone, I see that in this chart, prone, half DCV. But if you're stunned... Uh, according to Champions Complete, page 158, stunning does not render you prone. It's okay. just half DCV and half DMCV. And uh, non-persistent powers and skill levels of any type turn off at the end of the segment. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'll go with that. I'll have to figure that out as we go. This is normally how uh, we we run any game <laughs> is, okay, well, we'll make a common sense ruling now. I'll go look up the rule later. All right. So you are, uh, let's just say he that. Had, he had ahead. made his uh, break fall roll in the, on the attack that would have, that stunned him. So I'd say he's not prone. Yeah. I, I, I think that you've avoided taking knockback damage. But just the the whole uh, trauma of being knocked back half a street. Uh, you landed in your three point you know uh, position, but then you dropped all fours. Okay, so you're on the ground on all fours, right? 
knees and hands, and uh, okay. you're wincing under the pain of that first blast. Now the second blast hits you, and it's going to do 60 stun, 17 body. That is a beautiful roll. One, three, 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 four, 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 five, five, six, 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 six. Nice. So roll. I should take one body, and you said how much stun? 60. Can you see also the uh, chat area? And does it does it show that for you? Bottom left corner. Yeah. Like the log. So coil enhanced operator. Yeah, I had, put, I had to open it back up. So yeah. uh, is there any way to keep it open? There is. And it's uh, so if you hit the, the gear above the chat window, chat settings. And then you untick the auto hide chat. Okay, so ah, uh, let's see. I had fifteen stun. I took sixty, so that leaves me at a negative four. Ooh, this is ugly. All right, the agents. So before this is what happened, kind of before is you know, well, when you run different kinds of agents like this. Now these guys are. I'm not used to the point levels that these guys, you know, 14 die attacks from an agent. That's unusual uh, for me. Normally, they're little eight die attacks and, you know, auto fire, eight die blasters, that kind of stuff. Um, so, but I guess these uh, higher point levels maybe are like. Well, I'm, so that makes me out of the game because if you go recovery time, I get a recovery whenever the DM, the, the GM decides I get a recovery. Oh, you are out. Out, out, out. Okay. So you get blasted back and you fall unconscious underneath the V-Jet. Okay. TKO. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, In that case, that dictates my action. Yeah. Retreat. I, I cannot leave an ally helpless when, and when I am the only effective combatant on the field he is my team right okay for a gladiator he is closer than family <laughs> I, just, I love it love it all right so uh that was the coil agent there so we're gonna go to the heavy venomists to see if they can mop anything up here so this guy's gonna go one two three Boom, boom, boom. And then he's going to attack the truck. And he has a jackhammer blaster rifle. He's going to roll to hit the truck. And he hits the truck. Hoy. 12 body. That would probably take out the engine block if he if he uh, fired at pretty much at street level. Otherwise, if he were firing through the cab, he would have hit the tank. Boom. Okay, so it blows up the engine and then uh, knocks the thing up in the air and it hits back down on the ground again. You've lost a little bit of your cover. You're still okay for um, all intents and purposes on that. But all right. So then this guy, boom, 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 boom. Wait, does he have a different kind of movement that's useful? Nope. Check him for jump or flight. It's all the same. Nah. His jump is even worse. Yeah, no, he doesn't have any of that. All right. So he's just boom, boom, boom. All right, I think I just have two of those guys, right? Do, 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 do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that ends that turn. We're now on nine kinetic. You don't get to do anything. You you're dreaming. Okay. So. Now it's interesting. Did you mark your character as unconscious? In the combat part. Uh, of just now. I uh, just now. If you look at me, it says I'm KO. I see that. Kinetic was stunned, but is now knocked out. Nice. Okay. Well, that's good for the log. It didn't seem to affect the combat record any. I could be dying now. 
Uh, nah, because he's only took like it's one body, right? You said body. you took one body. Yeah, I took two body. I'm not. Dying. No, not even close. I'm just. I'm not. Okay, Ironclad, no, you, you just, move on ten. You just got knocked completely silly. Yeah. Okay. This literally knocked in the next week when you get to recover from being That's... stunned, and then <laughs> the week after you get to recover again, and maybe move yourself up the chart. I am pushing my. I'm spending extra endurance to get a temporary boost to my movement for jumping. Okay, so you're pushing. Go ahead. Uh, I'm pushing for 10 character points on my leaping. Okay. To get back to kinetic. We need to retreat and report that this is a serious operation. All right, so you so bounce it back there, and then... So go ahead and move yourself I back. I drew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, you, you can catch up to... Can, you, you jump back to where the... Because you got plenty of jumping, I think, 40 meters, right? Yeah, 40 so can, meters without pushing. Right. So, so I want to kind of grab him in passing so that would be basically a grab I definitely grab him and we're off to the jet okay which isn't far away you parked it uh, maybe in another intersection down or something all right so uh, basically what you see is um, these agents converge on this building that um, that's over here, right? Okay, and they drag a guy out of the building, and another one of these uh, vehicles pulls up, and they throw the guy in the car, and this vehicle takes off down the road. These guys then kind of defensively march back to these Humvees back here and they jump into those and they drive off. As you're taking the jet up off into the air to get him back to medical care. Um, actually, if he's not bleeding, I'm going to... Uh, I, I, the thing is, I believe that uh, Ironclad is a pilot. Let me... Uh, Pull up his skills in the PDF here. Combat piloting. Um, it is important to know where that vehicle is going. Um, if they, if we don't get, you know, if they don't start shooting us, we need to know. And kinetic can be uh, resting up. Okay. So for this scenario, then we're just going to say that uh, you follow them until they go into a tunnel and then they don't seem to come back out. And you were watching from, you know, like uh, like when the helicopters are doing high speed chase recordings and all you're watching to see where they go. And uh, it goes into this long tunnel and then they don't come back out. So that's okay. your point. That's your point of investigation right there. Uh, yep. Is this in Millennium City? It it, it, it is not, uh, and I haven't established what it is. But it, I I usually called mine Metro City, but it doesn't really. Ma it was before Millennium stuff existed. So uh, and it was before Metrocity. And before Mega Mind. Right, Metrocity. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've ended combat. It does say combat ends. That worked. That's good. Let's put that back. All right. So I think that'll end our play test for today. Uh, I think that was interesting. I felt like the the combat control, the turn controller worked well. Did you guys use the turn viewer? Yes. Yes. So you pulled that, that that's up. That's why I was able to go, okay, I can relocate and hopefully do a recover Right, That's why I went behind of, the vehicle. Right. And then when I saw, okay, 
I'll be able to make a recovery action. You know, I'll be able to snag kinetic before the next time the en enemy can move. Right. Good. Okay. Well, is there anything um, that did not go well that, that you felt like wasn't smooth or uh, and it wasn't just a familiarity issue like I didn't know where to look or I'm not used to doing it like that because uh, there's certainly going to be those that's just going to change that will yeah. evolve as we get better at everything. But I think from my perspective, um, I don't have any insight into your characters i had to zoom over to your character sheet to look and see what your movement was you have that easily inside your hud so it would be nice for me to be able to just pull up the hud for like maybe if in the in the turn controller if there was a place to and this might be handy actually for all uh of the HUDs is to pull them up into that turn controller and have a button that lets me expand the HUD for just that. Then I could leave all the HUDs off the screen and just from the Wait. turn controller, I could bring up a HUD. See the HUD for the phasing character. Exactly right. And that would also let me see players uh, character HUD as well. That would be sweet. So that's uh. my... I think, but that's just like a feature request. I didn't see any bugs except the ones we had because you modified uh, your character and that caused problems importing it into the turn controller and all that jazz. Yeah, I think uh, changing the um, speed is what threw everything off in the yep. comp. Yep, indeed it did. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think the uh, change also may just be a okay for this combat that change takes effect because it would presume that time passes between combats so the change may have been transient yeah. as well yep yep so i felt like running agents wasn't too bad it was slow i wish i had uh, a better snapping like what would be really cool is if from the turn controller I could just snap to a mini and I hit a button and it goes right to that mini for that guy. But in this case, I had one HUD for a type of agent and then several out on the board. Um, take a look at the top of the turn controller. Second control from the right. Jump to phasing character. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Okay. Well, that's something to... David should be yeah, addressing that. I don't. I don't see that that does that. So I don't know. Let's let's try it real quick. So we're gonna move all of the click to load everybody, right? And let's yep. start. And then kinetic. What if I? Hey, hey, stop that. Ah. You just there. You go. All right. So. If I hit this, yeah, it doesn't doesn't go anywhere. It just actually gets rid of the turn controller. <laughs> it just puts it back down on the board, on the table. So oh, the the uh, click on the title bar behavior is overriding the small controller icon behavior. Is that what you think? Yeah, part of part of the problem. Um, I don't know if he can fix that, but part of the problem is is the mini itself isn't connected to the controller at all. Correct. They're not As related. As you said, they're not related. So there's no way for you to jump to this model because the controller doesn't know which model it is. Right. Actually, well, it's not it, yet. It 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 should have. Yeah, that's something that when it when the uh, HUD gets injected. That's when it should pick up the, okay. Right. And he's thinking in terms of that, like you put your mini on top of your disc, right? And then it will connect your mini to your, to your HUD. Yeah, he's, he, he's working on it now, but <clears throat> it's, it's not implemented yet. Right. So, so it's an issue that he's aware of and is already addressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that in terms of uh, this turn controller... It would be very awesome to have in the list a um, a little button that would bring the HUD to my screen, like it would just put, pop it up to my screen. And I don't know if that's possible because of the way the HUDs work 
maybe the HUD is, you know, like right now I, I can bring up one of my Viper agents, but it would be cool to have that not there. And from the thing the, is, is yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm just saying right at the moment, if you look at, I don't know, you can't see mine, but um, since I'm the one that's active, my HUD is green. Green. It yeah, yeah, lights yeah. up green. Yep. So if, yeah, if you could just see all of them, you can see which one was lit up. Right. But then I could expand it. So my initial request right. to him was let me add PCs HUDs to my screen and I'll just keep them collapsed. Right. I don't need to see them. But when I do, I want to be able to just expand it and look and see what it is. Like that would be handy for perception rolls right. for you know, uh, other investigation roles, or you had to head to the bathroom or, or someone came to the door to deliver a package, but it's your turn. You've already said, Hey, I'm just going to attack this guy. And then I can just roll for you. Um, right. You know, or, or, or this session, this hero is not here. So I'm going to play him as a DMPC, right? <clears throat> So being able to do that would be handy without having to cop okay. the Jason, or, you know. So anyway, that's just, that's uh, my any any uh, feedback from you guys on how this went. Do you feel like combat went any faster than a, a normal champions combat? I, I didn't, but I also think that we're that we're we're in the we're, we're early super new at this fumbling with the in, yeah fumbling with the interface. But actually, uh, compared <clears throat> to yeah. You know, with unfamiliar players and such, I actually think that uh, this did go. Um, I, I I do think it was faster average. because there wasn't any counting of dice. That's the number Don't one. Worry. And and the <clears throat> fact that we were able to pre-count our moves. The thing I can see is like you said before, he needs to have something in there to roll knockback for you, so you don't have to. Maybe, or make it just as part of the combat role, <clears throat> where you could program it in. But um, but the difference in, like, if I'm... There's something that adds an extra die, so you're rolling three die. Oh, killing attacks. They, they do three dice. Uh, if you're flying, it's minus one die. There's a lot of modifiers to the knockback roll, so I'm right. okay. I'm perfectly okay with that being uh, something we roll separately. Um, but I, I, I would like a knockback roll that doesn't roll stun and body. Um, and it would be cool if the knockback roll could calculate based on the body already. You I know? Actually, I think for, uh, that might be something for the GM to set up as a, in a, uh, quick roll, a, oh, knock. Knockback versus flying. It rolls one die. Knockback, two dice. Yeah, and then if it's if it's underwater or what's the other one? There's another one that you get three dice. Killing attacks, do three dice. Oh, you're killing back. It doesn't knock you back as far. Yeah, so killing attacks is three dice. And then I think you can do anyway. So the uh, I I felt like. It was nice to have the dice rolls and have them logged because there was at least one time during this play test, you're like, how much was that? And I could just look at the log and go, oh, it was this much. And frankly, then you could look at the log and see that it was that much. Right. So I thought that uh, I, I felt like that was actually very helpful. Having automated dice rolls is always better. So it's just a matter, and, and I like the fact that there's a satisfying, even though you can't see them jump up in the air, there's a satisfying rolling sound <laughs> that gives you a, a real physics result off of dice. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, under the roll editor, you could set up the rolls for knockback if you wanted to, because you can... Yeah, um... that, that, that's why, that's what I had been talking about with you know, the GM setting up his own uh, quick rolls, one, two, and three dice for the various knockbacks. Right. Uh, until until something specific gets added into the interface, that would be a uh, simple workaround. Yeah. 
Agreed. And you just label those when you, or you'd actually uh, create them in the roll editor rather than the quick dice. So it's standard knockback, flying knockback, and then you just do the math and adjust positions as normal. One yeah, cool. thing that I had thought would be uh, good for uh, David to do is see if he can set up a mechanism for pivoting the HUD bars around the base of the figure so that if the miniature is set up strangely, you can adjust the HUD bars to where you think the back of the figure is. And then everyone knows that the HUD bars are the back. Oh, the yeah, the bars, right. At least if they're or is, you know, if they're yeah. oriented. So I think he wants to build his own. Uh, this is uh, swiped from someone else, but it's nice to have those bars attached to the mini so you can kind of stay in the game. And I think that right there is the number one bonus to this mod is that I would say during our play test, 90% of the time our attention is focused in the middle of the table, maybe even zoomed in. Right? Yeah. We were looking at our minis. You were zooming out only because it was long range <laughs> to hit something or you were counting your movement or something like that. That's in checking line of fight. Exactly. Yeah, and that's even better is you can kind of check your line of sight uh, from the, the the table itself. So anyway, I liked, um, and I think yeah, that's, I, the, that's the number one thing is that um, it would be nice to have a tool that also knocks, uh, there, there is something out there. I got to find it. It's, not, it's in the workshop somewhere and it will knock your guy down and pick him back up again. So it'll put someone in a in a prone position, and then stand them back up again. Okay. Um, one thing for this uh, for this map. Yeah. I think the two flat top buildings here in this corner uh -huh. are vertically misscaled. I mean, they're they're being shown as like. The height of four-story buildings next to them, rather than the two-story buildings they are. Because it's 11 and, meters tall. Yeah. I mean... Hold on a second. So, one thing to note, by the way... Yeah, the, the gray one is 12 meters tall at the upper roof. And it looks like the brown, the brown brick one is... Uh, 10 meters tall. So that one I could kind of uh, believe if it were more on the order of 8 meters being two stories tall. Now, I'm not sure. Because that would that... still give both floors being having nice high rooms in them. But that that's that's a uh, that's a map building thing. Not the, uh, not not the mod. Is the scale on these rulers good? I'm trying to line it up, and of course, it's gonna cause me grief when I do that. Well, there there's already one stand standing. Uh, oh. It's see, it's not to scale either. So these hexes are set to scale, and it's wrong. This one is wrong. So I wonder if I were to shrink it down. Okay, I gotta go for now. Um, since we're done yep. here, I'm we not, are done. Thank uh, you I'm very much. Play. Okay, thank you. I might play the one tonight too, just because. Yeah. Yeah, I may okay. try to make that too, just because uh, it's fun to to. I I only have weekends to play on, so it's good. There. Okay. Um, this four-story building, the long one over here is hold on a second uh, call it 13 meters tall 
at the uh, flat portion of the rough. And that actually looks believable in that it might have slightly uh, low ceilings. I've got nine meters. Four stories. Right. Uh, actually, hold on a second. Set that so there. I've got 13 meters at the peak. Nine meters at the edge of the roof. If you look at my stand, yeah. I've adjusted my stand, though, so that uh, it actually matches the hexes. They were too big. So that scale of that measuring stick was wrong. It didn't. It wasn't uh, one meter per number. Now it is. Okay. I laid it down, and then uh, these hexes are set at the two point three, so they are, uh, according to the measuring stick uh, tool, measuring tool, they are exactly two meters wide. So that. Um, so you adjusted scale for the accuracy of I did. Of so the, I yeah. fixed I shrunk this uh, measuring stick down a little bit so that it was exactly 2 meters across a hex. So anyway, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, um, those buildings should have been taller. Yeah. Because otherwise they'd have like 6 foot ceilings. Yeah, so this this map uh I swiped. It's called City Intersection in the uh workshop. And then I, it was much smaller than this. You think they should be bigger? <laughs> so this was much smaller. I increased everything in size. Uh, it was a pain in the butt to do, but I wanted it to be a little bit closer to what it should be for, uh, for hexes. And uh, the street is too big, right? So it is two and a half hexes of wide lanes, and those are too big. Um, actually... Let me check something. I think I had uh, done a uh, Google Maps view in New York, and uh -huh. I was I had been taking a look at okay, not in that file. Uh, so yeah, I found that um, that in general the. Uh, the scale of stuff, I you know, it just needs to be close. That's that's my opinion. I'm like, well, let's just make it close. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want stuff that looks yeah. weird too scaling, big. Scaling scaling yeah. can be slippery. Because in my experience, the the real uh, the real truth of gaming is I'm hand drawing crap on a battle mat, right, on a hex map. And so that's never going to be right. I'm just going to just say, okay, this is about a, this is the street, <laughs> and it is what it is. And here's a building here, yeah. and here's you're this giving that, you reference know. for uh, theater yeah. of the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so here I know we. It's nice to have things closer, but not everybody builds their models in a way that makes sense. So, this was this was someone else's yeah, model, that, and that, I fudged that, around that's with my, it. That's my detail obsession and borderline OCD going. On, <laughs> so. But I do like. Uh, the way this street looks and whoever built it they did a good job all the cars were messed up so i had to replace all of the cars because they didn't have any they were just like bright colored different they didn't have texture maps on them so i replied went and grabbed other cars that's why they there's not much variety in the cars i just grabbed what i could so yeah and that that that's perfectly acceptable for digital map building because it's like Okay, we get the idea of the. This is a populated street. And I can actually uh, excuse the that truck for not having moved. Frankly, uh, this car yes. should have uh, driven off because it's in an active lane. Right, right. It, sh it should have gone, oh shit, there's heroes here. And I'm out of here. Right. And I didn't move any of the normals either. I didn't put them in the combat record. But that would have been a good idea to move some of those things out of the way. You know, yeah. This one, on the other hand, it made sense that it didn't move because the street ahead of it was blocked. And the same for this car here. Mm hmm Yep. I mean, if, if there was someone in this truck... <clears throat> um. He might have tried to and divert over to here somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
Otherwise, he went, ah, uh, you know, yeah. It could it could also be excused by him going, my cargo is not worth my life. It's insured. Yeah, I'm just leave it there and fire, jump out. And he <laughs> he abandoned it. Yep. What does that Lots say? Stuff. Five was pressed by purple. What did you press? That was five. The log shows at 1059, you pushed five. It just says five was pressed by purple. What is that? Uh, that might be a, uh, a camera thing. Maybe. Does it, does it show that I'm hitting five again? No. Huh, interesting. I don't know what it was. It doesn't matter. That's cool. All right, man. If you're good, then I'll go ahead and uh, we'll quit the game and uh, post your stuff in uh, playtest reports and just ideas that you came up with. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And okay. Stop. And I imagine uh, 